Hi, Chris Parkin here for Rotary Camera Club and anybody else who ends up watching this, I'm just going to do a introduction to trip hitches in Photoshop and I'm using Creative Cloud for those of you who aren't familiar with it um, or, or just to make sure you're using the same version. Um, there's multiple ways of starting off getting your images. Um, I tend to do most of my work in Lightroom and then if I need to, to play to some degree I'll end up doing it in, in Photoshop so once you've if that's the way you're doing it once you've got your images ready in Lightroom um, select the th three presumably that you're going to use and you can right click and then edit in and open as layers in Photoshop and that will automatically open them like this let's see if I can get it to work there we go so you can see all three are in separate layers in Photoshop. Now at the moment they're not a triptych, they're just lying over the top of each other and if you notice um, there's some gaps around the, the outside, this one's particularly smaller and that's because I've cropped it in in Lightroom a little bit more. They are however all the same ratio so that makes our lives a lot easier when we're dealing with it. So the first thing I'll need to do is grab our move tool which we've got and then control and T and that will allow us to resize. Now I don't want to resize the um, the one that's already smaller, I want to grab the top one. I'll try that again, control T and I'm just going to drag it until the corners happen to overlap and I can see what I'm doing. Now I'm holding down shift um, and it's important to do this when you're dragging from the corners in Photoshop and that means that the ratio is going to be the same. Otherwise if you don't hold down um, shift you can potentially end up with with the images getting squashed and um, out of sorts. Now if you want to bring that layer to the top so you can still see what you're doing you can grab the layer and simply just drag it up and that will give it as on the top uh, top layer and that makes it easier to see. So. Control T again, hold down shift. Now oh, let me show you what happens if you don't. If you don't hold down shift, she can get squashed and it can look horrible. So I'm going to undo that and then try again. Control T, hold down shift, and I'm going to resize it again until I've got all three of these the same size. I'm then going to shrink all three at the same time um, so that I can get them onto one page. Excuse me, never helpful when you try and sneeze in the middle of doing a tutorial. <laughs> Alright, um, so this time we're going to select all three layers. So hold down shift and that's going to let us select multiple layers at one time and click each of them. We've got all three. Control T again and this time we're going to be able to transform all three of them and again remember hold down shift and we're just going to reduce them so that we could fit three on a page. Now multiple ways of doing this. You could make the pages bigger um, so that we can actually see all three of them so that we don't end up resizing them. But I'm not going to be printing this. I'm just going to be doing it for projection. There's no point in making the file size even bigger um, because it'll just give the, the computer more work to do. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is select one of the layers. Now if you've not used Photoshop a huge amount before you'll see this checkerboard pattern and that means that the background is transparent so there's no information there. So we're going to have to put something in that shortly. Um, at the moment I just want to get these ordered so that they're at least in, in rough order um, and, and the layouts are about what I want, um, which will do. There we go. So again, they're evenly spaced that's alright, but they're not evenly spaced this way. So select all three, and we can move all three at the same time and just make life a little bit easier. Okay, so as I did with the Lightroom version, I'm going to put a black background in. Now, this one I'm going to put a background in by putting a new layer in, and then I'm going to fill that layer with the paint bucket, bucket tool and black. And there we go. Oh dear, it's all vanished. <laughs> um, those of you who are familiar using Photoshop and using layers will know that that's because my layer is on top and I need to move it down the bottom. Um, for those of you who don't, you do now. Okay, so there we go. That's the three images sitting reasonably happily next to each other on the black background. 
there's a few things that I want to change and that, that we can tweak. Um, I'm not entirely keen on how little room there is between these images. So select all three of them, control T again, hold down shift, and we're going to shrink all of them at the same time. And that way we keep that ratio nice and uneven. Okay, so they're now sitting roughly where I want them. That's fine. We've got a whole pile of negative space down here. Um, and I don't really want it for, for the projector. It's not actually critical um, because of the projectors project onto black so you wouldn't actually see it. It just looks untidy. Um, so I'm just going to crop this and leave it so that there's a little bit more room at the bottom than there is at the top and make sure that we've got equal amount of room on either side. Um, one other thing that's worth saying is make sure that your delete crop pixels is unticked and that means that if you make a mistake, save the file and come back to it later, you can then go and fix it without making, um, having to, to restart things. So, before we go any further, I'm going to hit save, um, or in this case save as, because I want to make sure it's saved as a Photoshop document that I can come back and work on later. Um, and that will do me. Okay, so there's a few other things that we can do with this. Uh, I mentioned in the previous version of Lightroom that I wanted to put a, a white border on, and you can do exactly the same thing in this. Um, and simply to do that, go with FX, and you're going to put a stroke on. And in this case, we want the stroke to be white. It's going to be tiny, only two pixels wide. Outside, uh, blend mode is normal and let's see what it looks like. Very, very small white um, box around that. In fact, it's too small. So we can go through and change that to 5 pixels. And that's looking more like it. So um, we can do a few other things and we can go and put this layer style on the others. Now you can do it by repeating the, the process, or you can go copy layer style, right click and paste layer style, right click, paste layer style, and there we go, we've now got the same style over all three layers, and yeah, I'm starting to like that. Now, where Photoshop differs from Lightroom is Lightroom we were stuck having all three of these images in parallel. They had to be one after the other and there was no way of doing anything else. Um, they were either going to be next to each other or, or on one after the other next to each other um, or one after the other on top. With Photoshop you have a lot more freedom and we can stagger them and actually play with the the way that they're composed within the image. So let's just have a, a little bit of a play. Um, obviously you're going to select the layers and then move them. And I think that that now works better because we've, we're playing with the eye line of the cherub um, into the middle. And yeah, it depends on your images. Some, sometimes it will work better as, as a plain triptych. Um, other times it won't and you'll need to double check the rules for the national, uh, the Nelson Triptych competition because there are some specific ones about them not overlapping etc um, versus the club rules versus what you'd be able to do in um, when you've not got any rules attached to your Triptych competition. So yeah, do read those very carefully. Sometimes you can get away with more in one competition than another. Um, and I've just realised I've managed to do something that I really don't want, which is having all three of those, uh, the, the edge is not quite the same. So one other hint that you can use is the arrow keys, once you've got your layer selected, will make a small movement. Um, and that can be, can be quite a nice little touch to, to just even things up for you. Alright, hopefully you've learnt a few things and it's useful and yeah, feel free to drop me an email if you've got any questions.